art teachers from Rutherford County Schools are back with an exhibit at the Community Gallery. We're very fortunate here that our arts teachers are incredibly talented artists in their own right. I think there's a misperception out there that once people become teachers, they stop practicing art themselves. But our teachers are incredible artists and they bring that to school and, and bring that to their students every day. This year's exhibit includes some new contributors. This is the uh, first time I've actually got to participate in the uh, faculty only uh, art gallery. Um, I've been so busy over the years as a head coach as uh, soccer and uh, travel soccer, I've had the opportunity to uh, step away from some of those responsibilities and it's allowed me to actually work on some artwork for a change. Um, so this is the first year I've actually been able to actually enter some work. Well, this is the first time I participated in the faculty art show for Rutherford County. Um, I remember it being offered last year and I didn't do it and kind of regretted it. So I wanted to challenge myself this year and put myself out there. In addition to educating, the teachers also encourage and motivate their students to grow their talents. Our teachers work so hard every day and they give so much of themselves to our students every day. Um, they teach our students basic skills and then not only that, but encourage them every day to go beyond what they think they can do and, and just to stretch themselves and do more and more every day. I give them the technical aspect of, of what they can, what the possibilities or technical being, printmaking for example, giving some ideas of how to do that. Uh, different types of media of a painting, whether it be watercolors or acrylics. And this year, uh, my art too has explored uh, oil paints. We had a generous don donation of oil paints and we've been able to uh, explore that aspect of that medium as well. Well, really at that level, what um, kids are really trying to figure out is whether they even like art. Um, so for me, I feel like my job as a middle school art teacher is to really try to get them excited about art, try to get them to see all kinds of different artists. Um, we look at a lot of contemporary artwork. Um, we don't necessarily, I, I don't keep parameters really, really narrow for their projects. They get to use a lot of creativity, make a lot of choices themselves. They'll come ask me, uh, should I paint this white or what should I do here? And I'm like, I don't know, it's your artwork. So for me, it's really trying to get them to take ownership um, and trying to get them to try new things, um, trying to get them to experiment and um, just really get a feel for what art is um, so that hopefully they will continue with that into high school and beyond. Sharing their love of art and the students' efforts to learn have been some of the best rewards for the teachers. Probably the most rewarding thing is when a kid says, well, I'm just not really good at art or I don't like art. And then I remind them, it's all about how you frame it and how you're looking at it. And if you say you don't like it or you can't do it, then you definitely can't. Um, but the most satisfying thing, and it, it happened just the other day with a kid in his project, he said, I just, I can't do it. And to help them through that and get them to realize that they actually can is probably the most rewarding thing. Halford adds it's very important to introduce the arts to students. Art is the pinnacle of human creativity, communication, um, and if we don't start that at a young age with our students, we forfeit that for the future. So we're very serious about starting that for our students at a young age here. Well, I, I even tell my, my own students this, you show me a robust art community, I'm gonna show you a thriving community. Children need it because they can explore and, and communicate ideas through different types of mediums. McGoffin and Welker took the time to discuss a couple of their entries in the exhibit. This piece is called Event Horizon and I've uh, I started this work when we, we, had, to sh we had the shutdown and I had uh, some opportunities to start painting and exploration. Um, some of the things that it came out of this, well, first of all, I, my mother was a BFA and she did a painting of a black hole kind of thing many years ago, back in the 70s. So this is kind of a tribute to her and her painting. And then when I started painting this, there was a, um, a, a photograph that was made of the first observable black hole uh, that came out and I took that idea and uh, kind of shaped uh, this canvas around it and then I came across this really uh, 
this really uh, this black. It's called Black 3.0. It's supposed to be the blackest black uh, uh, acrylic black that you can get, and it absorbs about 99% of the black. So I really spent some time trying to get that um, that uh, that deep black, kind of mysterious with the energy and the the paint that is running around it. And if you know your phys physics and knowing how, and I love, I, I love the sciences and, and, and talking about physics in my classroom, so that's my personal journey as well, is how the jets of energy come out of that center. But I want that to be the, the focal point of this piece. So with that and that shaped canvas and waves and um, that circular, that geometric shape, um, and there was another one of my favorite artists, uh, a piece, and there's actually with the paint, uh, there's an artist named Anish Kapoor from, uh, from uh, London who has some of his pieces and he, and he loads up uh, this sculpture with this deep pigment. And there's this piece at the Hirshhorn in Washington, D.C. that is so deep and dark and you look down this abyss of, of darkness and I just love that because it's really uh, it's inviting in a mysterious way and so I've taken some all, all those ideas uh, and trying to put it together into this one piece um, I, the, I've used foam, foam core because it was he, very easy to for our foam board it was easy to shape so I used that and then I primed that, and then I just kept layering paints of acrylics. So this is done with acrylics, with a, with a wood backing, and with a, uh, a, with a wood frame uh, behind it. So that's, that's my piece right there, it's called Vince Horizon. Uh, I hope, you know, it, it sits in my house. I'm glad I got to uh, share it with uh, the public. Uh, it, it does catch the eye, I hope, when you walk in, because that one big area of, of blackness just kind of sucks you in, kind of like a black hole. This piece is called the Storm Pass, and it's really a completely different um, attempt for me in general. I don't really consider myself a painter, um, and I created this very much for myself. Um, and it's I wanted to kind of capture my favorite colors, um, my favorite places, um, and uh, so. I, I actually started this piece last summer um, and slowly, it was, it was almost school time when it started and so I slowly worked on it all throughout the school year and this show actually was an opportunity for me to make, get it finished um, and so I, uh, it, took, it took a while and it's unlike anything I've ever done, I, I've not really tried to um, paint realistically before. Um, I tend to do abstract, uh, if I do painting and canvas, I've done a lot of fluid art and pouring and things like that. Um, so it was a really different attempt and it was really challenging um, and I had a lot of fun with it and I was, I was grateful to uh, put it in the show and say, yes, you're done, I am not touching this anymore. So. The Rutherford County Schools Art Teachers Exhibit is on display at the Community Gallery inside Patterson Park Community Center through May 16th.